God for those precious blood stains. Amen. 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 I know that um, if you've watched the news today, I didn't watch the news this morning. I, I was uh, engulfed in God's word this morning, but uh, this afternoon I saw the news and saw where 50 people were killed in Florida. And um, it looks like to me, uh, some may not appreciate what I'm going to say, but the killing took place in a cesspool of sin. Amen. And yeah. um, no doubt, a lot of people lift their eyes in the region of the damned. It breaks my heart that people want to kill Americans. But I tell you, when America will have revivals, when it breaks our heart that people are leaving this world Amen. unprepared to meet yeah. God. Yeah. Yeah. I'll tell you, we're in trouble in our country. You know that. But uh, in one sense, we're that crowd that declares plainly that we seek a country. We seek a city whose builder and maker is God. Amen. Amen. This world is not our home. Amen. We're just a passing through. I heard a man on the radio the other day. I won't say who his name is. I'm not interested in picking on people. But he was talking about evidently uh, what I could gather from his age. He's about 52 years old. And he's uh, battling different kind of chronic things going on in his Bible. And he said, I woke up one morning and I realized this is as good as it gets. I thought, how sad. Yeah. I'm glad I know down in my heart. Yeah. Honey, this ain't as good as it gets. Amen. Amen. It's fixing to get gooder for God's children. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. I, I typed my announcements a couple weeks back and I used the word wondermus. Brother Arnold responded. He said, that's not a word. I said, it is now. <laughs> Amen. I made a word out of gooder and I made a word out of wondermus. Amen. I'll say a couple of things before I get started tonight. I got plenty to preach. Don't worry about that. But uh, we'll say a couple of things. I want to thank everybody that worked in the Bible school. I'm telling you what's truth. I I watched some of you men bend over knowing, uh, picking up balls, picking up this, and picking up that, and, and uh, ministering to those kids. And um, we need some more Logans next year, don't we, Brother Steve? Amen. We need some more of that, that generation. Amen. Say amen, you old fellers out there. Amen. I'm trying to get you some help. Amen. <laughs> amen. Boy, it was a good Bible school. The Lord blessed. And I told Sister Shelby one day, I walked into the uh, fellowship hall back there and she was serving drinks. I said, now, you listen to me. I said, we don't allow no old women in here. She looked around and said, I don't see any, do you? <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Amen. Ain't it good to have fun on the way? Amen. World's all dried up. God's people have something to be joyous about. Let's look in the word of God tonight. Brother Dennis, it's good to have you with us tonight, brother. I appreciate you. We uh, went to church many times together and I appreciate you being here tonight. I appreciate our people tonight and our visitors, every one of you tonight. It's so good to see you. Well, let's see, where are we at? Verse number 18, Revelation chapter number two. And unto the angel of the church in Thyatira write, these things saith the Son of God, well, we got hung up there this morning, didn't we? Boy, he's good, isn't he? Yeah. Who hath his eyes like unto a flame of fire, and his feet are like fine brass. He said, I, I know thy works and charity and service. Let me ask you a question as I read down through this. I'll come back to this a little bit. It, it dawned on me as I read this verse, Brother Steve, what's the difference between works and service? I really didn't know. I had to do some digging. I had to do some study, and I'll share that with you in a minute. Just give you something to think about while we read the Bible. It said here, I know thy works and charity and service and faith, thy patience 
thy works, and the last to be more than the first. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee, because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel, which calleth herself a prophetess, to teach and to seduce my servants to commit fornication. I'm just going to say this. It's just come to my heart while I read the verse. One of the things that's happened in our nation is we have put ungodly people in the colleges teaching the children. We've allowed them. And in many cases, kids were raised right and they go off and get in that mess and don't know what to believe when they get out of it. I tell you, you better pray the kids are grounded. I say kids, I'm 56 years old. You know what I'm talking about. The young men and the young ladies in high school and college. The sufferers, that woman, Jezebel, to teach and to seduce my servants to commit fornication and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. Again, I'm not gonna, oh, my, I'm telling you, we can't pass out Bibles but we can pass out things in the school system that you know what I'm talking about. They call it safe. It's not safe if it's ungodly. It's not safe. Can't pass out Bibles but go to passing out things to help their immorality. I didn't mean to say that, but I'm telling you it needs to be said. I can remember when they came through when I was in school and gave out New Testaments. I can remember when they got on the intercom and read the word of God over the intercom every morning and then had a word of prayer. And now we're worried about offending a bunch of godless people that's come into our nation and don't know the God of the Bible. teach and to seduce my servants to commit fornication and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. I gave her space to repent of her fornication and she repented not. I've heard, you know, in days gone by, people will say, well, this sin is unpardonable or that sin is unpardonable. I'll tell you what's unpardonable is not repenting. Jesus' blood can cover the sin but if we don't repent, then we can't be pardoned. Amen. I'll kill her children with death and the, all the churches shall know that I am he which searcheth the reins and hearts and I will give unto every one of you according to your works. But unto you I say and unto the rest in Thyatira, as many as have not this doctrine and which have not known the depths of Satan as they speak, I will put upon you none other burden but that which you have already hold fast till I come, he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end to him will I give power over the nations. He shall roll them with a rod of iron as the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers even as I received of my father. I will give him the morning star. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the spirit saith unto the churches. Let's pray together. Father, I need your help tonight. Lord, I know tonight that, Lord, these letters, they are practical. I know they are prophetical. And I know, Lord, they are personal. God, I pray, Lord, that these letters to the churches would speak to our hearts. God, I pray that we'd be very careful in this generation. Lord, we can't control what's going on at the White House. We can't control what's going on, Lord, and so many homes across America. But God, give us enough wisdom, enough grace, enough backbone, Lord, to not allow some things in the house of God that are displeasing unto thee. Father, I pray now that Jesus would manifest his presence in our midst. Help us, our Lord, that we might do the will of God till you come. Speak to hearts, our Father. Lord, if there's one among us lost, I pray you'd save them. One, Lord, at a distance, Lord, out of fellowship with God, I pray you draw them to your precious side. 
in Jesus' name, amen and amen. We spent the morning, we introduced the message telling you that our Tyra means unceasing sacrifice. They were known for their wool industry. They made dye in Thyatira, especially the purple dye that was known among the royalty, among the rich people of that generation. They would dress many times in purple. We looked this morning and saw a word from Christ in the message. He's the one in the scripture, the one that was sent, the one that served. He's the one that was sacrificed. He's the one that was seen after he rose from the dead. He's the one that saves. He's the one that secures. He's the one that secures. He's the one that searches. And he is the one that is sovereign. We will face him one day after a while. The second thing I want to look at in the message tonight is a word not only from Christ, but a word of commendation. I bring this out again because I remember how uh, God spoke to my heart when I first discovered this truth in the writing to the churches. Jesus, when he has to rebuke the church, he always, if there's anything positive there, he commends the church before he rebukes the church. I've said this and I think it's true. There's something to be said of that in parenting. It doesn't matter what our children do, amen. If they're doing wrong, surely they're doing something right, something that we could commend them on before we would have to rebuke them. And this word of commendation comes in verse number 19. Jesus said, I know thy works and charity and service and faith and thy patience. Then he repeats the phrase, and thy works, and the last to be more than the first. The only way I knew to find out is it just welled up in my heart. What's the difference? If, if you're working for the Lord, you're serving the Lord. If you're serving the Lord, you're working for the Lord. So I, it, it was in my heart to find out what's the difference. The works, the Greek word there is ergon. It means to work. It means to toil as an effort or an occupation. By implication, it means an act, a deed, doing or work. In other words, it might have some sweat involved with it. Amen. And so that's what that word works is talking about. But what about the word service? I thought this was uh, interesting. It comes from the Greek word and I typed it out how to pronounce it. Uh, diakonia. And it means service. It means attendance as a servant. It means to aid. It means uh, the service as especially of a Christian teacher, a minister, the office, relief, service, and is translated deacon in other places in the New Testament. So God is telling us there's a difference here, amen? The, uh, the works and the service. The, the works kind of tends to the physical side of things. Are you listening to me? Beloved, we had a spiritual Bible school, but how many can say amen? There was a whole lot of the physical side that had to go into the, just like a, a church, somebody built the church, somebody uh, uh, painted, somebody laid bricks, somebody put a roof on it, somebody put windows in it. And so the works is talking more or less the physical side. The service is talking more or less the spiritual side of things, the ministry side of things, uh, ministering uh, to others. Jesus said, I didn't come to be ministered unto, but to minister and there's three things I want to give you right here. Christ was reflected in their ministry, in their works and in their service. Christ was reflected and he commends them for that. The Bible said, let your light so shine before men that men may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Uh, somebody said one time, well, God knows my heart. That's the truth. But the way that men and women will know your heart is when they see what comes to the outside, out of the inside of your heart, and they'll see the light that God has put in your life. So Christ was reflected in their ministry. But not only that, Christ was reflected in their motives. They're doing the right thing, but they're doing it for the right reason. He said, I don't only know your works and your service, but he said, I know your charity. I know you love me, amen, uh, listen, I, I know there's something bad going on here at Thyatira and we wouldn't dare maybe compare it to what went on over here at Ephesus, but I'm telling you, the problem that they had at Ephesus, they had left their first love. They didn't have that problem at Thyatira. The ones that were in were doing what they do out of a heart of love for God. 
and for God's people, amen? So it was reflected in their ministry. It was reflected in their motives, but then Christ was reflected in their maturity. Watch this now. This is the whole idea of Jesus saying what he says, I know thy works. And then he comes down into verse number, the end of verse number 19, and thy works. And the last to be more than the first. What are you saying, preacher? I'm saying if God will let me get old, the last ought to be more than the first. Amen. I'm saying that I ought to be increasing, not decreasing amen. in the things that God is allowing me to do. Say amen. amen. I believe that. I really do. I believe we ought to be like Caleb in our last days. Give me that mountain, amen. Don't give me a, I was kidding Brother Houston one day. I said, Brother Houston, what do you think they'd say if we got us a hammock and strung it up between these columns out here? <laughs> we felt like it some days, didn't we, Brother Houston? Amen. The other men working diligently and laboring. Amen. But I'll tell you, thank God, there's a place for a hammock, but there's a place to roll up your sleeves and go to work for the glory of God. Amen. There's a place to rest. It was reflected in their maturity. I, I, I wrote this down. God help us to be commended like the church at our tower and deliver us from laziness. You want to hear something funny? I read this. I couldn't help myself. Story of an old mountaineer and his wife. They were sitting in front of a fireplace one evening just passing the time. After a long silence, the wife said, Jed, I think it's raining. Get up and go outside and see the old mountaineer, Jed, he continued to gaze into the fire for a second. He sighed real deeply. Then he said, just call the dog in. If he's wet, we'll know it's raining. That's about how lazy we've gotten in this generation. Say amen. I'll tell you, let me tell you something right now. You listen. Listen to what I'm saying. You'll answer. I'll answer for sorriness, laziness at the judgment seat of Christ. We're instructed as God's people to occupy till I come. Amen. I tell you, I've not preached a lot on laziness. Amen. But I tell you, God is not for, I, uh, that proverb, brother uh, Brian, is slothfulness. Them old timers didn't say slothfulness. They didn't say laziness. They said sorriness. Hey, they'd say, oh, so-and-so is sorry. Um, I've heard my daddy say, why well, they wouldn't take a job in a pie factory tasting pies. Yeah. There's some people that lazy in this world that we live in. But God deliver us as God's people from being a lazy people. So we see a word of commendation. But now we see a word of confrontation. Listen, I don't know about you, but here, here's how I am. I'm just telling you my nature. If I can avoid it, I want to avoid it. Brother Ralph, if me and you can get to heaven without having to confront one another or about something, you understand, I, I like to avoid it. If I'm not, I'm not, some people are geared just the other way. Where is it? Confrontation, where is it? Just let me find it, amen. Let me get into it, amen. I'm ready. But Jesus is not afraid when it's necessary Amen. to confront what needs to be confronted. Amen. Amen. And I believe it's part of the job. It's part of the job as pastor. It's part of the job as a Christian. It's part of the job as a Christian dad to confront things when they need to be confronted. There's just three things right qu here quickly that I'll give you in this confrontation. Jesus said, notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee. Because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel, which calleth herself a prophetess. Did you understand? Listen, there's a lot of people calling themselves many things in this generation. She calls herself a prophetess. But she is no such thing. She's wicked. They said, do you suffer her uh, to teach and to seduce my servants to commit fornication. Now, wait a minute. Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. There's a little bit of truth right here to learn about this confrontation. Jesus said, there's a teacher that's gone bad. Well, she's just rotten. That's what she is. Rotten to the core. Amen. But the Bible tells us how a rotten teacher comes in. 
A rotten teacher don't just come in, stand up one Sunday and say, I want everybody to know, I don't believe a word of God, don't believe a word of it, I'm rotten to the core and I'd like to have one of your Sunday school classes. That ain't how it happens. Oh, they come in unawares. They come in talking smooth. They come in talking the language. How many knows what I'm talking about? You say, preacher, why would you say such a thing? I tell you, God being our helper, I believe there's enough people around here got enough spiritual sense about them. Amen, if somebody opens the wrong book, they'll know it. And they'll tell pastor. If somebody's preaching the wrong doctrine, they'll know it. If somebody's teaching the wrong doctrine, they'll know it, amen. You say, preacher, why are you the authority? Oh no, the book's the authority. The word of God is the final authority. The church is not the final authority. The pastor's not the final authority. The teacher's not the final authority. How do you know Jezebel's wrong, preacher? Because God's word said she's wrong. He confronts her. The teacher in the church is confronted. The tolerance of the church is confronted. Sometimes, beloved, it's not so much what a church is doing as what a church is allowing Listen carefully to what I just said. Not so much what a church is doing, but what a church is allowing. I'm telling you, I thank my God above that I don't have that problem in this church. But let me tell you something that I've experienced as a pastor. I've had people plug music into the sound system and honest to my God in heaven, I wanted to crawl under the front pew. I was so ashamed. Are you listening to me? You say, preacher, well, what was the matter with you? I'll tell you what was the matter with me. Amen? I'll tell you what was the matter with me. I was young. I didn't know how to handle. Are you listening to me? We're supposed to learn a little bit along the way. Amen? And I'm telling you, listen to me. I'm glad we don't have that problem. We should never come the Bible way and it sound like a rock concert going on when you come in the vestibule. It should never look like we're going to the beach. We're God's people meeting in God's house and we ought to be careful what we allow in the house of God. Amen. Well, what did Jesus say? The word of God said this, judgment must first begin at the house of God. If we're not willing to judge ourselves and judge what's going on in our midst, no wonder the world's going to hell in a handbasket. Amen. Beloved, It's a word of confrontation. The teacher in the church is confronted. The tolerance of the church is confronted. He said, you suffer that woman. You allow her to teach. Somebody ought to set her down. Amen. 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 I'm gonna go ahead and throw this in. Somebody ought to not just set her down, they ought to put her out. You say, preach, you got scripture for that? Sure do, read the book of Corinthians. Paul said, put away from among you. Put them out. He said, preacher, why, well, how could you do such a thing? I'll tell you how. Because you love them. And because you love God. You see, if there's anything in there, they're going to starve and they're going to long for the fellowship of God and God's people and they'll repent, get right with God, get back in the house of God and if there ain't nothing among them, uh, my friend, listen, down going on down in their heart then John said it like this. He said they went out from us because they were not of us. Therefore, they went out from us. It hurts when people leave. It really does. But I'll tell you, there's some things, beloved, that either needs to get right or leave in the house of God. Jezebel needed to go, and they were allowing her to teach and to seduce. He said, his servants. Here's the truth. Listen to me carefully. I don't care how far you've been down this road. Brother Brian, you brought a Sunday school lesson not too long back, and I can't remember exactly how you worded it, but but you said something like we never graduate. We're not up there in the upper grades. Somewhere we're down there in the lower. I worry about people that think they're in the upper grades. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. I do. I worry about that. Amen. But let me, let me say this to you. It, it was God's servants. It's right here in the Bible that were tripped up by this woman. 
See, a lot of people believe if a, if a believer gets tripped up, well, then they, they must be, you know, they, they probably not even saved. That's what you'll hear people say. But right here in God's word, yeah. Jezebel allowed to hang around, seduced and tripped up the servants of the most high God. Amen. That's what I read right there in the Bible. To seduce, he said, my servants to commit fornication and to eat things, sacrifice unto idol. Listen to me carefully. I don't want to dwell right here, but I've said this and I'll repeat it. You and I, as believers, are capable of anything outside of the leadership of the Holy Ghost and worse than we ever did when we were lost. How the apostle Paul, the great man of God that he was, said, I keep under my body. I bring it into subjection, lest by any means... When I preach to others, I myself should be a castaway, disapproved of God. Paul realized when he got up, I had a conversation this morning with a young man that told me some of the things he's facing at work and how they're trying to trip him up and how they're trying to get him to go back into sin. You see, when people aren't saved, they don't like it when God throws a saved man in the mix. I told him this. I said, son, the worst thing you could do is try to convince them or come across to them like you're better than they are. I said, the best thing you could do is look at those young men and say, listen, you guys know what I was. I'm no better than you are, but Christ lives in my heart. And there's some things I can't do now that I used to do. There's some things I can't say now that I used to say. There's some things I can't look at now that I used to look at. You say, preacher, what do you call that? A new creature in Christ Jesus. Yet they're trying their best, just like old Jezebel, to seduce, get him to come right back to his old way. A word of confrontation. The teacher in the church is confronted. The tolerance of the church is confronted. And then the testimony of the church is confronted. Jesus said in verse 23, he said, I'll kill her children with death and all the churches shall know that I am he which searcheth the reins and the hearts. Look at all the churches shall know right there. How many believes if Bible way goes to pot? Help me. How many believes if Bible way goes to pot? We could see probably 10 people saved in one service and all of Kingsport wouldn't hear about that. But let, let Bible way go to pot. How many knows what I just said? Amen. Honey, it'll be all over town before the sun comes up in the morning. Amen. All the churches shall know, Jesus said, our testimony as a people, a church is at stake. How important that is. A word of confrontation, the testimony of the church. I'm he which searcheth the reins and the hearts. And I will give unto every one of you according to your works. And then thirdly, I see a word of com a consolation here. And I, I believe this is something that will uh, be a blessing. Uh, God will use it. We, we see a word of commendation, a word of confrontation, and then a word of consolation. There are some things that should comfort and console the church. In closing, let me give you these hurriedly. In verse number 24, he said, But I say unto you, or unto you I say, and unto the rest in Thyatira, as many as have not this doctrine and which have not known the depths of Satan. I will say this. This come to my heart a while ago when I read that. That crowd that was in that nightclub at 2 o'clock this morning, they know the depths of Satan. Oh, they didn't know that they knew, but honey, they're wallowing in the depths of Satan. We've made it legal in this country. We've put a stamp of approval on it in this country. But I tell you this, as long as I'm pastor of this church, there'll never be a stamp of approval. And I don't believe I'm by myself. There's a lot of men, a lot of women that love God. And we will never, ever, ever approve what God said is an abomination in the sight of God. How are we going to help people if we wallow in the depths of Satan with them? There's
there's a consolation here. There's some things that should comfort us and console us as a church. Their doctrine was according to the word of God. He said here, as many as have not this doctrine, they didn't have the doctrine of Jezebel. They had the doctrine of Jesus. They had the doctrine of the word of God. I'm saying this and I'm trying to say it politely, but I've been in places where people have openly said doctrine is not important. That's crazy, folk. Doctrine is what the word of God teaches and that's the most important thing you and I could ever learn in this world is what the word of God teaches. Sound doctrine. There's such a thing as false doctrine, but sound doctrine comes from the Bible from the word of God. They had a doctrine that was according to the word of God. Their deliverance was gonna be according to the word of God. You say, preacher, what do you mean? Look at verse 25. But that which you have already, hold fast till I come. You know what we ought to do? We ought to take this old King James Bible, we ought to give it a big hug and say, Lord, by the grace of God, we're going to hold fast till you come. Hold fast. Now listen, I'm not talking about hanging on to my salvation, but I, what I am talking about is holding on to that which was once delivered unto the saints. The faith that is so precious. Brother J.W. DePew, uh, others have blazed this trail ahead of us. Amen. I was talking last week to a man by the, about Brother Mays Jackson. He said, I haven't heard that name in years. I'll tell you what, we don't need to let them die. Say amen. They ought to be in our memory bank. Amen. I'm talking about men that has stood, men that have not compromised the word of God. And we ought to determine by the grace of God, we're going to hold fast till he comes. Toe the line. Amen. Not veer off to the right or veer off to the left but walk with God in these days. There was a doctrine according to the word of God. There was deliverance. He said, I'm coming. And he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, to him will I give power over the nations. He shall rule them. Jesus will rule them with a rod of iron as the vessels of potter shall be broken to shivers. I tell you what you think about right now. All the nations in the world that have their chest stuck out, and they think, where the stuff? Just wait till the Savior gets here. The stuff will be broken in pieces, amen. That's what the word of God is teaching. And then, let me give you this and I'm done. There was a desire according to the word of God. You say, preacher, what do you mean? The Bible said in verse 29, he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. It is evident to me that God is rebuking not only Jezebel, not only those that are following that doctrine, but he is rebuking the church for allowing that to go on in the middle of it. But God is also saying, there's some of y'all that are not involved in this. You don't know the depths of Satan. I tell you what, this would be a good prayer to leave here with tonight, that our children and grandchildren, Brother Brian, would never know the depths of Satan. I'm telling you, listen to me, listen to me, listen to me. There's a drug culture out there. It's trying its best to get them. The drug culture wants water, wants colson. There's an alcohol, a, a drinking culture out there. There's a sex culture out there that wants our children and wants our grandchildren. You believe me tonight? And I tell you, we ought to go to bed for them and we ought to pray, oh God, that they would never know the depths of Satan and the sin that he has in this world. They had a desire. They had an ear. They wanted to hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. I close with this tonight. If we'll take care of the little foxes, Remember this morning, God shining the light in individual lives. If we'll just take care of the little foxes, the little foxes that spoil the vine, if we'll just do our best to walk with God, I believe God can help us to have a church 
that finishes in the old time way, still raising the blood-stained banner. I wrote that down before you ever sang that song, Sister Theresa. We need to be raising the blood-stained banner and telling the lost and dying world, Jesus saves, Jesus saves. There's a better way. You don't have to know the depths of Satan. There's a better way. If we're not careful sometimes, we think only the people that's been saved out of a life of terrible sin have a great testimony. I'm gonna tell you the greatest testimony is a life that's never known the depths of Satan. It's never known the terribleness and the depths of sin. I believe with all my heart that God can help us and we can have a church that will finish in the old time way. I believe the day's coming quickly, don't you? We can say we fought a good fight. We finished our course. We kept the faith. Henceforth, there's laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me in that day, not to me only, but to all them also who love his appearing. I want to say this tonight, and I'm done. Sister Theresa was singing, I claim the blood. I remember where I was. Amen. Did you know, Brother Rose, I had something called a boom box. How many remembers what a boom box was? Oh, I could tell you a story about a boom box, but I won't for the sake of time. Did you know what a boom box is, Johnny? You're grinning like you do. I hope you do. Amen. I had a boom box. And I tell you, some of the most ungodly music that you've ever heard in this world used to come out of that boom box. But I believe God saved my boom box. It got tuned into the right channel. And I can remember where I was in Chilhire, Virginia. Me and Daddy was up on a porch putting siding on the front of the house when that song come across WZAP. I claim the blood. Honey, I couldn't see how to hit my thumbnail, let alone the right nail. I was a weeping. Amen. I claim the blood that Jesus shed on Calvary. That's the first time I'd ever heard it. But I tell you, it blessed my heart then. And the great thing about it, it's still blessing my heart today. Amen. What's of God will last. Amen. Amazing grace has stood the test of time. Amen. Victory in Jesus is still good. Yeah. Amen. There's power in the blood. Amen. About time for them mosquitoes to get to singing that. Amen. 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 There is a fountain filled with blood. I don't know how you feel about it, but I'm having so much peace, so much joy, so much contentment. In the old time way, why in the world would I be looking for any other way? There is no other way, the songwriter said, but through the blood of Jesus. Amen. There is no other way. How many glad you come tonight? Amen. I've learned something from Thyra Tyra, haven't you? Amen. You say, preacher, God had his eye on Thyra Tyra. Let me say something to you tonight. God's got his eye on Bible way too. Amen. Amen. It's not preacher's church. I know what people mean. They mean no disrespect. When they say, Brother Rick, your church up in Bloomingdale, they don't mean any disrespect. But really, it's God's church up in Bloomingdale. Amen. 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 I remember one of the first messages I brought on a Wednesday night when I came here. And then you all were without a pastor at that time. Was trying to encourage you and let you know, Jesus said, it's my church. Upon this rock, I'll build my church. Amen. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. You say, I don't say, preacher, why you preach so strong. Well, I'm really not a strong preacher. You all know that. But I tell you what, I'm not worried about the gates of hell. Amen. Amen. They're not going to prevail against God's church. Amen. They're not going to prevail Amen. against God's Amen. people. Let's bow for prayer. Father, thank you tonight for the word of God. Thank you for these examples in Scripture, Lord, where you spoke to these people.